Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. In today's episode, we are going to be creating another pet portrait. So again, if you would like to send images to me of your pets or wildlife photography, you can share them with me on my Instagram account, on my Facebook or my website. But remember, my website is actually going to be um, down for a little while because I'm actually having a um, an online store set up so you can purchase uh, some of the original oil paintings if you are interested. So on the palette today, we have titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, permanent cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and neo McGilp medium. And if you would like to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can feel free to scroll down to the description box down below and I'll have them all typed up for you. And if you would like to purchase the same type of materials that I'm using, I now have Amazon links uh, next to the uh, item that can be purchased. So it, there will be links that will send you to the Amazon uh, page. And if you decide to scroll through the pages or purchase any of the oil paints, that is a way you can contribute to me because they will pay me a small fee. So thank you advance if you do that. So on the palette let's go ahead and mix up two color value webs. So the first one is going to be a warm color value web. So I'm going to use just burnt umber and uh, alizarin crimson permanent. I'm already using a little bit of my Neo McGill medium. We're going to use the flake white in the middle tones and then we're going to start to use titanium white as we approach the lighter tones. And there we have our warm color value web. So this is kind of like a warm grayish color value web. Now we're going to want a cool color value web. So we're going to use ultramarine blue and ivory black. And now we're going to add the flake white. And remember, flake white has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much, as you're seeing here, which allows you to have a thicker mixture of paint. And now we're going to use the titanium white. See that? How much lighter it gets. A little more titanium white. And let's just have a really, really light light here. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. All right, that ought to do. And here we have an image of our model Xena, the Malamute Princess. So this uh, picture was sent to me through my Instagram account and I really did like this picture. So I decided I'm gonna make a painting of this picture. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cover the background. And so I'm just using ivory black ultramarine blue and a little bit of Neo McGill medium. And we're gonna be using the Alla Prima approach to creating an oil painting. I'm gonna split this up into just a couple stages. So the first will be the block in, which is what we're doing here. So we're just using simple straight lines and angles to block in the uh, composition basically, where we want the, um, where we want Xena's head to fit. So I really like the value scale in the background of this picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. So it's a little bit darker here, as you can see on the photo reference. And then it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more blue over here. So I'm gonna use a little bit more of the ultramarine blue and our Neo McGill medium. The Neo McGill medium just helps to increase the fluidity of the oil paint. Now you can see a silhouette starting to emerge. So I'm pretty sure that this is the composition I want. I think that uh, Xena's nose will fit maybe somewhere over here. And we're gonna crop it a little bit to the left of the screen. Well, should I say of, your, of the canvas. <laughs> we're gonna crop it a little bit to the left, okay? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, um, the value scales. So I'm gonna use the, um, let's say the dark one first. So very quickly here, I'm gonna get a uh, simple color block in for where the ears are going to fit. I'm gonna keep switching between the light gray and the, uh, the warm gray and the cool gray. 
So here now we have the the warm gray for Zena's ears. Very simple there. Gonna switch back to the background brush. Try to put in some of these darks very quickly. So when you're working with mass, so th this is working with mass, right? This is a mass. Just a giant, uh, kind of a giant blob of color or value, well, in this case, both. Um, it's important to, you know, think about working the painting from the inside out. And that's certainly what we're doing here. So I'm gonna just cover this now. I have barely any medium. So that's why it's kind of hard to, you know, apply the paint just because we're working over top of a dry layer. But with enough force and enough paint, uh, we can certainly get the paint to stick very easily. See that? So the idea here is to cover and cover quickly and try to be very tactical, especially when you're working in Alo Prima. So right around here, I'm already saying that this is gonna be probably, you know, the center mass of uh, Zena's skull. So now I'm going to move up the value scale using the same brush and just a lot more paint. Now we're gonna move up the value scale. Here we have our first little light mass. And when you're working with Alo Prima, it's, it's really important to uh, have less or little to no medium in your first layer. So Alo Prima means uh, working wet on wet. And so that's what we're doing here. We're, per we're basically putting in the first layer. This is gonna be the initial scaffolding of which all of the shapes are going to uh, follow. So I'm actually going to switch to a larger brush and with a little bit more of the titanium white into the lighter gray area of the palette. Here you see the value starting to emerge. So I decided I think that Zena's nose is gonna fit somewhere over here. Lighter plane over here. And at this point I'm really trying to cover as quickly as I can. So I have more time to work out the, the smaller shapes, the fur and all of that. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, have two brushes for the uh, kind of the, the cool gray tone. So this is now going to be designated the, um, you know, the half tone brush for the cool gray. You know, we're not worried about um, detail or anything like that. The eyes and all of that stuff will be of interest later. But you can see already uh, we have kind of the impression starting to emerge. Even more paint. So the reason that I'm using thicker paint in the beginning is because uh, when you're working in Alla Prima with oil paint, uh, thinner paint ten tends to stick more easily onto thicker paint. So I will use a, a thinner application of paint in the uh, later stages. So now using uh, the warm gray, a little bit more color for the ear on this side. Let's go ahead and follow through on this side. This is a very bold and expressive way of working as well. Like you, you can get a lot of nice effects in this style. Now I'm gonna to return to the background brush. Now I'm quickly gonna to start to push some of these shapes over and then switch to the warm gray. Now I'm trying to get the silhouette. So a little bit more of a warm gray there. So I can't really see this portion in the picture, but I, I kind of just want, uh, you know, I don't want to crop the face too far, or the face, or uh, Zena's head. I don't want to crop Zena's head too far in that direction. Uh, so I'm going to use the information here and basically duplicate it and mirror it over here. So here's how I go about doing that. So with the warm gray brush, see that? Kind of replicating what I see over there. 
nice and simple. Switching to the halftone brush for the grays. And this episode might be a little bit longer than the other uh, pet portraits that I did just because I decided to, uh, you know, talk and paint at the same time, which has been referred to as live style, not to be confused with, you know, live streams or anything like that. So now we're putting in more half tones here for where the eyes will eventually fit. And I'm just using the dark, I'm using the darker value for the warm grays. And now I'm going to switch back to the lighter values for the warm grays. I'm sorry, those, those were the cool grays. I think I accidentally called them warm. So let's just go ahead and lay this layer down. I had to think quite a bit before starting uh, this painting, so that's why I started right away uh, with the warm gray and the cool gray uh, color value webs. Just because I knew that it would help kind of uh, see these shapes with much more clarity. Now back to the warm gray. So down here we're going to have the bottom of in his mouth though so I do think that that should be cooler so we're going to put the cool gray and now we're going to go up in value all right now going up in value now we're going to have the snout a little triangular half tone over here indicating the bottom mass of the fur. Now we've pretty much almost got the large planes. So what I'm doing is, the, the first thing I did was block in the initial composition, okay? And so that was the uh, outside shape. And now what I'm doing is I'm facilitating the larger plane divisions. And once I have the larger plane divisions in check, then it'll be time to get the smaller brushes and start to paint in more uh, small shapes, such as the, you know, the eyes and all of that, and the fur. So what I'm doing is I'm subdividing the fur into planes. So this right here is one plane, 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 and then plane. So a little more of the white into this area here. There's quite a lot of paint on here because of the fur. I'm going to want to get a much more, uh, you know, realistic depiction of the fur. So I know that the the way that you lay down the brush stroke, you know, with thicker applications of paint such as this, will allow you to go in with a much softer brush. So eventually we will get into the um, the synthetic brushes and then add in some more, you know, fur-like brush strokes. Just the half-tone brush, covering all the way to the bottom. So it looks like Zena is leaning on something here in the picture, but I'm gonna make it seem like Zena uh, is just you know, either sitting or standing and staring straight at us. And with composition, it's important to think about the abstract. And I'm thinking about the abstract shape, you know, just this whole silhouette. You know, how does it, how does it read as, you know, an abstraction? There are beautiful abstractions and there, then there are kind of simple abstractions. So I want this one to be not as simple, that's why I have it kind of turned over to the left, but I also don't have this cropped all the way, just because, I don't know, I didn't want to crop it. So with the warmer middle tone brush, now we're starting to put in some more little indications 
some smaller shapes. So that means pretty soon we're going to transition into the smaller shapes. Pretty soon. A little bit more of a half tone here. So I think what I'll do is start to put in the dark patternings, um, such as uh, this one here. So I'm going to put in the dark patternings and then we're going to get into the next stage, which will be smaller plane divisions. And I'm using the background brush, admittingly, because I didn't feel like looking around for another brush. So we're putting in these darker notes. You know, one side is symmetrical with this side. How do you pronounce it? Ma Malamute? Malamute? Is that how you pronounce the name of this dog? I'm not really sure, but really beautiful patternings. And again, this is why I like to do wildlife and animal portraits and animal paintings as well. Just because of the vast variety. Very beautiful. Let's see here. Since I have this dark brush, I might as well start to, uh, you know, put in some more of the dark here. The nose right there. And I put some, just a little bit of the Alizarin Crimson Permanent. There we go. Just trying to sketch in the shape. And we'll worry about all the little, you know, We'll focus on all the little details that go in there later. And now that we have this brush or this value, let's go ahead and just kind of suggest where the eyes are going to fit. So one here, one here. Let's use a horizontal line, vertical line. So I'm comparing the corner of this tear duct to the bottom of the nose. So it looks, looks about good as a general shape. So now we're going to start to go into the smaller planes. So that means I'm going to get you into a close-up shot pretty soon now. And now for the next stage of this painting, what we're going to do is now subdivide those larger shapes into smaller shapes. So we're going to want another color value web here. And now with a little bit of Neo McGill Medium, we're going to mix up another color value web. Uh, so you can see why it's kind of useful to have a larger palette, right? Look at all the space that I've used up there. So we're going to use the Burnt Umber and Alizarin Crimson Permanent for our first uh, value. Okay, and so what we're doing is we're mixing up a kind of orangey dark color for uh, the sclera. And I'm going to want to have sclera light and sclera dark. So this is going to be uh, sclera dark. So a little more of the burnt umber and um, a lizard and crimson permanent. Now we're going to go into the cadmium red yellow ochre. A little bit more. Neo McGilt medium. Remember that thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint with uh, it just it sticks much easier when it's thinner and you'll, you'll see when we get into the the painting so this is going to be my kind of a charging brush even though it is a smaller brush and now i'm going to switch into these two little tiny brushes and i'm going to add a little bit of neo mcgilt medium and i'm going to venture all the way down towards here and get a very dark color here a little more Alizarin Crimson Permanent. And we're going to move this mixture over here. So these are going to be the colors that I'm going to want for the eyes. Alright, so now we're going to start to put in the smaller shapes for the eyes. Uh, just take note that the camera is much closer to the painting, but it's at an angle with respect to the painting. And uh, yeah, just know that it's going to be kind of a little distorted just because I don't want the camera to get in the, the way of the painting. So let's go ahead and start to put in the eyes. So that's going to be the back side of one eye. Tear duct. Geometrically, this point goes all the way down to this point, so we should be good with that. 
another point there. So I'm going to use stay horizontal. And this is actually a, a selfie stick that I'm just using to uh, lean my hand on just so I don't get any uh, fingerprints on the painting. So see how thinner paint, so I'm, remember I thinned it out with the Neil McGill medium, so again that's a point for the tear duct. So see how easily the paint is sticking. I'm gonna use another horizontal. Yeah, I think that shape is gonna go to about there. So now it's just down to the small shapes. I'm actually gonna thin the paint out a little bit more with my odorless mineral spirits. And let's see how much better it will stick. See that? Sticks very nicely, perfectly. A little bit more over here. And there's a very nice little angle here that should replicate that one. So I think this one needs to angle a little more. Something like so. Isn't that neat how it sticks on so nicely? All right, so now the next thing to do is to get the, I'm actually gonna use the brush that I used to charge up the uh, sclera mixtures. Hopefully it's not too large of a brush. I think it's working. So we're filling in just a simple little shape there for the sclera. See this eye is a little bit too big. Either it's too big or this one is too small. So I'm actually gonna stand back to make that assessment I think that this one's a little too small. So I just push it. And when in doubt, either blur it out, but I'm not gonna blur out the eyes, of course, or use a caliper. Yeah, so this one is bigger. By how much though? Let's see. By this much, just a tiny little little bit. So I'm going to push this shape back. Just a little bit there. And now I'm going to use the same brush to put in the pupil. So there we have the dark of the pupil on one side. Replicate it on the other side. There we go. Now Xena is looking right at you. So with a little more of the Neo Miguel Medium, a little bit of Mineral Spirits, Titanium White into the lighter middle gray flesh tone. You guessed it. Now we're going to put the highlight. And that's always one of the most fun parts when the highlight is like right next to the pupil. It's kind of, you know, getting the glimpse, that stare that our, our model is making with respect to us. Now it's just a matter of filling in uh, the little shapes for the fur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to fill in uh, some more shapes around the fur here, and then we're going to venture off towards the nose. So let me do this, and then we'll move on to the nose.
And now we're going to subdivide some of these smaller shapes for the nose. So using the same tactic basically that we did with the eyes, we're going to start off with this darker accent here. It's much easier, um, you know, with the Alla Prima technique to again work with the smaller planes, such as that plane that we established earlier, and then put in these smaller planes on top of them with, of course, a thinner application of paint, which is what we're doing here. So a little more of a dark shape here. Almost appears like a parallelogram to me. It's a little curve on the side. And of course there's going to be a darker shape underneath here. So I just want this corner to kind of match up with that corner. Darker shape turning into there. It's almost like a, like a triangular shape. Okay, so now with the color that I use for the sclera. I'm actually going to add a little bit of light gray to that color and we're going to put in this little little bit of light right here. So there's less medium on the brush so it's actually blending a little more than you know adding. So what I'm going to do is show you what happens when I add so right now I purposefully want this to blend, that is just appear soft. So now I'm gonna thin out the paint. Now we're going to add. With a little bit of a thinner application of paint. Now we're adding on the lighter shapes. All right, now what's left is the same thing that was left with the eyes, just to fill in some more of the dark fur around the nose. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I'm gonna put in the little whiskers. And I'm feeling extra patient today, so I'm gonna use the same little brush and just keep marking down the little, the little indications of the fur. See that? Very nice and simple. Thinner paint will stick onto thicker paint. And all over here. Of course, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you all of me painting, you know, all the footage of me painting these little, little glimpses of fur, just enough because this could take a long time. It's actually a very relaxing part in the painting. So let me go ahead and continue doing this. And now the next thing to do is just get a clean and dry synthetic brush. So this is just a clean and dry um, sable brush and just soften. And in this case, I'm probably going to soften uh, many more edges than, than the norm. Just because the fur, uh, Xena's fur is so soft. So in order to get that effect, now that we have these large planes, it's really down to the edges. Although most of the edges are already pretty soft, it's just a select few, like this one over here. So I really wanna soften. And like I usually say, you know, I'm not trying to create 
a perfect photographic rendition of the model. That's never what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is observe shape. You know, just distill all this information down into a simple shape. I think we should soften these shapes too, huh? So you'll notice um, the paint starts to get thinner and thinner as we start to add on more layers and the brushes start to get softer and softer. This is probably one of the softest brushes that I have, if not the softest. So those edges look pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the warm middle gray uh, value scale now with the same brush and the Neo McGill medium. See that right there, how we're able to add on these shapes. See how we're getting the effect of the fur, very simply. Let's get some more little shapes of fur out here. Some more little darker accents over here. Very soft touch now. So let's add a little bit of mineral spirits to this little brush and use the ivory black. And with that, I really hope that today's video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And as always, remember in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I really do hope that you have a wonderful day. And I'll be back again with our next episode tomorrow.